Australian environmentalists are sounding the alarm. They say one of the country's most precious rainforests, the Tarkine, is under threat. Places like this are just becoming more and more rare. And it's home to over 60 rare, threatened and endangered species. And this is an area that should have been protected decades ago, and we're still out there fighting for it. As the government introduces tougher penalties, these protesters are prepared to break the law to stop a mining development. How do you feel about going to prison for something like this? Not great. I'm pretty righteous though, so... <laughs> Bring it on. 101 East meets the ordinary citizens making a stand to save Australia's ancient forests. It's early January in the Australian state of Tasmania, and a small band of passionate environmentalists is on a secret mission. We're, we're car two in a convoy of maybe eight to ten cars. There's repercussions if, if we get seen, particularly by cops, particularly in this region. 27-year-old horticulturalist Mitch Houghton is expecting trouble. If there are law enforcement that come into the site, it's 99% likely that I'll be getting arrested. They're here to protect old growth rainforest from a Chinese mining company that wants to build a dam to store its toxic waste further down this road. Months of planning will all be for nothing if they're discovered. It's always a a combination of um, trepidation and excitement. Former youth worker Scott Jordan is a veteran environmental campaigner. But there's always that element when you come in as to whether you're going to get set up before they arrive, and so it's, it's racing to, against the clock to make sure that happens. Push! 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 They're preparing a common blockade tool. A vehicle destined for scrap is carefully placed over a pipe already concreted into the road. This will be the anchor for an activist to lock on. They're a diverse bunch aged from 21 to 73. Among them are a retired vet, a doctor, a bartender and a chemist. You're in the danger zone, Thomas. Uh, we need to push further. That's it. No, we need to go a little bit. That's it. Oh. This isn't the first time the group has made a stand here. All right, so good, we didn't get busted yet. <laughs> so far, good. So far, so good. <laughs> good start. They say that in 2020, they stopped the logging that left this scar. A year later, they set up another blockade here when they found out about Chinese mining company MMG's plans for a tailings dam. On May the 18th, um, police rolled in and they cleared the blockade camp and MMG started pushing ahead with its roadworks. And so over the next um, 60 days, every day volunteers would turn up often at three in the morning in the pouring rain in the middle of a Tasmanian winter, would go in and they'd lock themselves onto those machines to prevent any more roadworks from occurring. So we saw 72 people arrested. Um, it was incredible, the, the step up we saw. In July 2021, MMG stopped work pending environmental approval from the federal government. Listen here, everybody. 
Expecting this to come through in early January, the activists have returned to the forest. And so um, we're back. Um, I guess we're picking up where we left off in 2021. So you notice down here in the valley, you don't get the eucalypt overstory that you get on the ridges. I asked Scott and some of the other activists to take me into the forest where the new tailings dam is supposed to go. The mine is just a few kilometres away. So what have you got down here? So you've got the myrtle and the sassafras, the leatherwood, uh, celery top pine. Oh, that sassafras leaf. Tasmanian doctor Lisa Searle has been working to protect these forests for nearly 14 years. It's more of like a breath mint. <laughs> this forest is thousands of years old and some of these huge myrtles that you can see around us would be four or five, even 600 years old, but the forest itself is older. Than and where we are sitting at the moment on this slope, this is um, in their plans, this area was going to be, or is going to be one of the kind of walls of the dam. So everything below so everything, us here. Yeah, everything, all of the trees and all of the forest that you can see around me would be gone, totally flattened. Everything is a 285 hectare stretch of land, which would need to be cleared for the tailings dam and surrounding infrastructure. It includes pristine rainforest, which is home to many threatened species. Toxic mining waste, known as tailings, would be piped here from the mine in the nearby town of Rosebury, across the Pyman River. If the bulldozers do come down this road, all that will stand between them and the forest is this van and the activist inside. Hey, Walmart! I got some brekkie for ya. Good morning! The person who sleeps here is ready to lock on at the first sign of trouble. And today, that's Mitch, the young horticulturalist I met on the way to the blockade. You don't do coffee? No. Can you show us what locking on involves? What do you actually have to do? Sure. There's not much to it. I shove my wrist with this little dog chain on it down this ominous looking pipe. And then at the bottom of the pipe, I lock onto a chain. And then I'm now stuck here. <laughs> if the police arrive now, Mitch says he could be arrested for obstructing the road and for failing to comply with a police order, and probably fined about $700. He's already been arrested three times. How do you feel about going to prison for something like this? Not great. I'm pretty righteous though, so... <laughs> How do your family feel about you being here doing this? And they hate it. <laughs> they think it's um, stupid and dangerous and I'm really uh, compromising my future um, for little gain. How does it feel to know that there are people so angry at what you're doing that they're prepared to get arrested to try and stop it? That is frustrating. We're doing everything right in terms of our permits and approvals and our intent to be a responsible coexisting mine on the west coast of Tasmania. Steve Scott is the general manager of MMG's Rosebury Mine and he's sick of being portrayed as the bad guy. He started out in the mining industry 22 years ago as a labourer cleaning out tanks. Rosebury Mine is um, one of the oldest mines in Australia at 86 years of continuous operation. We mine zinc, lead and copper and a little bit of gold and silver dora as well. We make up about 40 to 50 per cent of the total royalty paid from mining companies in Tasmania. It's about $100 million uh, over five years. Um, it's been here for a long time and, and we hope to be here for a lot longer. Rosebury Mine employs about 500 staff and contractors. Laura Moore is a chemical engineer and manager of surface operations. 
It's great working here. What I love is the fact that we take something that exists in the ground, bring it to the surface, and we're able to add value and convert it into products that are saleable. The precious metals can be used in anything from mobile phones to medical equipment. The mine already has two tailings dams, one of which was the source of 18 leaks of contaminated water into the Pyman River since 2018. Both dams are close to capacity, which is why the construction of a new dam across the river is a top priority. There are myrtle trees there that are hundreds of years old. How do you feel about the prospect of cutting them down to store toxic waste? I think you've got to look at the bigger picture, Amos. Um, you know, this sounds a little bit off track, but you, the mine site that you're on has coexisted in this environment for 86 years. We look for the lowest impact area, um, and that's at South Marion Oak. There's the most viable option for us. Why is that preferred? Because it's on our current mining lease, so we have access to the land, but there's still a multitude of um, things to understand to, 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 to get to the point where potentially a dam could be built. Sounds a bit like out of sight, out of mind though, doesn't it? Let's put it in the forest where we can't see it. Yeah, you know, why put it in town if you don't have to? With a population of just 700, Rosebury would struggle to survive without the mine. If we haven't got a tarnish down, we haven't got a bar, if we haven't got a bar, we haven't got a town. I think it's pretty simple. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? It's got to be built. We've got people in the shop waiting to be served. They won't be here. They'll be gone. I mean, I believe in the sustainability of our planet, but at the same time, you know, mining provides us with everything that we have in life. What do you think about the environmentalists that are out there trying to stop MMG from doing their work. I reckon they should drown them. <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't have said that. There's 500 year old myrtle trees in there. 500 year old myrtle trees in a lot of other places too. They're all over the bloody place mate. They're everywhere. It's a rainforest, it's full of the bloody things. Goodness gracious me. But environmentalists say you don't have to choose between jobs and the forest. They argue there's a better way to dispose of the waste, a method that's been embraced as best practice by the mining industry and which MMG already employs in its Queensland mine. It's called paste fill. So paste fill is a, a um, solution where they take the tailings, crush them down to a powder, then combine that with, with concrete into a paste, which they can inject back into the voids in the mine. But MMG says paste fill wouldn't work here. Partly because the voids are already filled with waste rock, and partly because in an old mine with unmapped holes, paste would pose a safety risk to workers underground. The environmentalists refute these claims and insist their aim is not to close down the mine. We're not opposing the mine. And it can have a long and, and productive future. They have to do the right thing with their tailings and the right thing isn't dumping them into a rainforest. Is this campaign just about one patch of forest? Look, for us it's not. Um, this, this is... I guess the latest battleground in a fight for protection of Takaina Tarkine that has, that has raged for over 30 years. What is Takaina Tarkine? We've referred to it as the Tarkine for many years, but the Aboriginal people refer to it as Takaina. It's about half a million hectares in the, that contains Australia's largest remaining temperate rainforest that has some of Australia's most significant Aboriginal archaeological heritage and it's home to over 60 rare, threatened and endangered species. It's an area that has verified national and world heritage values and should have been protected decades ago. Wilderness photographer Rob Blakers knows as much as anyone about the Tarkine and has offered to show me some of the treasures it contains just 12 kilometres from the protest site. So we're heading down to one of the most amazing places in Tasmania. Wow. And probably in Australia, in the sense of it's got some of the oldest trees in the world.
This is the fantastic ancient hue and pine. Within 50, 100 metres of where we stand, there'd be a dozen big trees like this, and each of these trees is upwards of a thousand years old. Wow. The hue and pine is native to Tasmania, but its numbers have declined dramatically since European settlement, often due to logging and mining. And nowhere else in Tasmania is there that extent of undisturbed, natural, healthy hue and pines. Just a few kilometres upstream, there's a tree that's two and a half thousand years old. Left undisturbed, these will grow for another one or two or more thousand years. And from their rootstock, other human pines may well grow. And so we can have this ongoing, theoretically immortal stand of trees. It's a wonderful concept. So is this a national park? If only. There are more threats to the Tarkine than the MMG Tailings Dam. In fact, another mining company holds a mineral exploration licence here. As a place for tourism, as an icon of brand Tasmania, they're just amazing. And yet we don't value them at all. And we could have a mine, you know, 100 metres that way, and they'd be gone. Back at the blockade, in another part of the Tarkine, the activists are preparing to reinforce their defences. Among them is artist and retired nurse, Carol Barnett. I soon find out she's the sister-in-law of the state politician responsible for resources. Ready? One, two, three. The minister is got an interesting set of policies that are all designed basically to um, disregard this beautiful world heritage valued area. Um, I just don't get that. Does he know what you do? He might have an idea. I would be very surprised if he didn't. Um, have you been arrested before? Yes, I have. I have. So you really are on opposite sides of this conflict. Uh, yes, in fact, um, the Minister wants to instil harsher penalties for people like myself who believe passionately in protecting the forest. Again, one, two, three, yep. Would that deter you? Oh, God, it, would, it, would, it was designed to deter people, and I feel that's an affront to democracy. It would not deter me. Not at all, in fact. Come on. Bring it on? Bring it on. Yeah. Yep. I'm not no Nelson Mandela, and I'm just a granny, but <laughs> I think he's on the losing team. This is Carol's brother-in-law, Tasmania's Resources Minister, Guy Barnett. He's a vocal supporter of MMG's proposed new tailings dam and tough penalties for protesters. We strongly support the company's right to proceed through the environment and planning approval process and uh, that's what they're attempting to do notwithstanding the, uh, uh, the very radical environmental uh, protesters who are trying to stop it. They're saying that they're above the law. Workplace safety is important. Um, workers should have the right to go to work without being uh, stopped. Are you saying there's a threat to worker safety from the actions of the protesters? Absolutely, yes. Under his proposed new law, protesters could be fined up to $6,000 or jailed for up to a year for a first offence. It will have no impact whatsoever on peaceful protests. It's still a peaceful protest though, then they can still be arrested and charged under the existing laws. Well, the laws aren't working very well. MMG did get approval for preliminary works, and the police ejected the protesters in April. But that hasn't stopped them. Now the activists return to the forest by night to obstruct the road before MMG workers arrive in the morning. What are you setting up? Tobias Linz works in the pharmaceutical industry. 
she'll spend tonight and much of tomorrow in a tree sit. I'm going to attach a line to that tree sit and it will be hanging from whatever structure is being made over on the other side. Okay, slow. Right. Slow the push. Okay, good luck. Good, thank you. It's about 4.30 a.m. by the time most people leave. Two remain to block the road. One in a tree set, and one in this tripod. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. How was your night? Yeah, really good. Yeah, very cold. But luckily I've got my buddy brought me up a hot water bottle. <laughs> Dr Colette Harmson is a vet and a long-time activist. You're obviously expecting to get arrested today. Yeah, yep, I've been arrested many, many times. And I'm currently on a um, three-month um, suspended jail term. Uh, for forest defence, I just feel like this is this is my last avenue of, of trying to tell the politicians and the people that this has got to stop. I hope it makes a difference. Good morning. How are we going? Good. I haven't given you permission to film us either. I'm not sure that we need permission on public do road, it. do we? I'm employed by MMG and my work site is further down this road. I need to drive my vehicle down this road to conduct my works and you are obstructing my vehicle from passing. Will you please move off the road so that I can drive to my work site? No problem. I'm asking you once more, please move off this road so that I can continue past you. Will you move from the road? No comment. Say the time. Here I plea, oh, it means the world to you and me. Don't let them cut down one more tree. It's around midday when the police arrive. A search and rescue unit has been called out. Only they have the skills necessary to safely extract the protesters. Activists who aren't locked on get move on orders, which means they're forbidden from returning, usually for about two weeks. How are you feeling about the fact that Colette could end up in prison tonight? Trying to protect the planet over here, but apparently that's a criminal offence. It does feel like a massive amount of effort you go to to hold them back for a single day. Ah, uh, every minute counts every single minute to the last tree. The fact that you're breaking the law makes it very easy for the government to label you as criminals because you are. Yeah, look, and we're going to wear that. When the law is unjust, um, people will stand up and break the law and, and we don't apologise for that. By the time Colette and Tobias are arrested and the road cleared, it's too late for MMG to do any work today. So far this year, 18 activists have been arrested, but they've had a significant victory. In July, Australia's federal court ruled the government needs to reconsider its approval of MMG's works in light of its impact on Tasmania's endangered masked owl. In the meantime, MMG was ordered to remove all its machinery from the forest. Guy Barnett is no longer resources minister and could face questions in court over the legality of the lease he gave MMG over the access road. Tasmanian Parliament recently passed the government's new anti-protest laws, 